Hey guys, welcome back to the Chew with Rue. We're back with another low carb recipe today, and I've got some special guests. Get in here, boys. Hi. Yeah. Paul and the boys are here for a steak pinwheel. This thing might be the best recipe I've shared in this channel. And boys, I need your help. Can you choose the bobblehead for today? Let's see it. What'd you pick? Eric Hosmer. All right, Eric Hosmer bobblehead and steak pinwheels coming your way. Let's go. All right, guys, so I'm here with one of my best buddies of all time. This is Mr. Paul Hart. Paul, say hello to everybody. Hello, Facebook users. Uh, yes, and Paul has been a fan of the show since the very beginning. I meant to say YouTube users. It's fine, YouTube it's and it's Facebook. It's not live. Both. We're not live on Facebook, but we, I, we, I don't know, even know, I don't have a Facebook page for this stuff. So, hello YouTube land. There we go. And mm -hmm. so, we're working through what I'm, I would say, Paul, this is my favorite recipe that I've come up with. Of okay? all of them. Of all of them. I love them. The Cheddar Bay Biscuits. I would say this is the one of the, the like the, you know, I love my fish, my shrimp tacos. Yes. Killer good. I love the gyros I came up with. I, and I love all of my recipes. The, the pizza, we got one we're working on for the fall with the low carb lasagna. This is my recipe start to finish. Can, Can I, I tell you my family's favorite? Of the ours? Of, our, of yours. Okay, yes please. We love the turds. The buffalo the turds. The buffalo turds are a hit in the hard house. I like that. I like that. I like turds. <laughs> okay, so this one I actually was watching a show. This is a show on YouTube, on the YouTubes called Binging with Babish. You ever watched Babish? I do not know the Babish. Babish is good. You should check him out. And he was making these pinwheels and I was like, oh my gosh, you could totally make this into something that's low carb. We are going to take this blank steak and we're going to butterfly it. That's step one. And I okay? should use my knife. You brought your own knife. I brought my own knife. Okay, so phase one, guys. You're going to get a couple flank steaks now. These right here, oh, I'd say this is two pound flank steak, a little bit over two pounds. Pick them up at Sam's Club. They come in a two pound, or two pack. Mm -hmm. So it's just a little over, uh, you know, a little over two pounds per flank steak. It's a substantial right meat flap. It is. It's definitely a meat flap. We stop calling it that. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna actually first remove all any kind of silver skin type stuff. Okay. So be gentle there. Any of this little extra sinewy fat. One of the things about flank steak is it's not terribly expensive. Uh, for example, this particular package of meat. One of the reasons I like to use it. I mean, you could do the same thing with a ribeye, but you'd be wasting the ribeye, right? That's right. This is this is like twenty six dollars worth of meat right here between both of these. That's not bad. Not bad, right? So bad. we're making a double recipe today, but all of the ingredients that I'm going to tell you guys and what I'll put in the show notes is all going to be for a single recipe, like a single serving for a family. So if you're going to do it with two steaks like this, uh, you're going to want to double everything I say, uh, which is actually what we're doing on our end. But basically, we're going to be taking this steak and we're going to be basically turning it into a giant butterfly flank steak, kind of like what you've done. You've done that with chicken where you butterfly the chicken. Love butterfly chicken. One of the things I really want to try. out and then butterfly. Uh, well, or speaking of pattern out, buddy, just pattern. waiting where we're going. Wait until when you see where we're going with this. You're on I'm top so of it. So any little that. sinewy meat you're going to get rid of because flank steak, like I said, it's a cheaper cut of meat than what you're going to have with ribeye. And because of the materials of the muscles here, this is going to be the chew that a lot of people have. If you don't, okay, there's a great example. Is it the chew with the root? <laughs> the chew with the root, a little extra chew. Look, this little sinewy fiber is right here. I don't know if you all can see that or not. But all this sinewy fiber, I call it silver skin. That's what I've always called it. I don't know where I picked that, that up. It's that on ribs. You have the silver skin on ribs. Exactly, like it's the same kind of, this is, you know, this is beef. But the pork has the same kind of thing. And so, yeah, you want to get rid of that silver skin. And that's going to be the chewy, sinewy stuff. If you don't get that gone... Um, it's going to make this a little bit more chewy. I will tell you, you'll probably get away with it on here because of the way we're going to prep this, people are going to be forced to cut it on the bias. They're going to be able to cut it against the grain. Yes. You'll see why in just a second. One of the reasons we butterfly it and don't just chop it up and pound it out at the beginning is because of that. All right, I'm getting close here. How are you looking, bro? Uh, you know what? It's going to be what it's going to be. Um, dude, I think you're doing great. I think, I think it's good. No, I think you're great. Okay. So, so typically, I've done this several times, I've made this recipe a bunch. One side of your meat flap is going to be a little bit straighter than the other. You can say that, but I can That's the side I like to work from. <laughs> and basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to open this up. Like you're going to cut along here. Yes. And then you've got to take your time, be gentle, right. and you want to take it and so it's going to open up like a book. Okay, so you're going to take your chef's knife, start along this end, and listen man, patience is a virtue. So look, I'm going super slow through here. Did you want that glove? Do we want? No, I don't want that. 
No, I'm going to regret it. But okay, I'm going to go all the way across. All the way across. So, am I going... Where, where is it Let flapping me start. to? Let me start and I'll show you. So you're going across, and we're opening this up like an envelope. Correct. So eventually... We're going to stuff it, right? Not quite. We're all not right. stuffing. So all right. You're cutting fine. all the way across, and then here you want to leave this connected. Leave this, the this binding side. of the book, the straight edge. So I can do up to here where I where I have. Right, but I would always go as a line. Always like as a he, line. Because here's what's going to happen if you don't. No, no, no. The line's not going to match up. You're trying to open it as a book. Then this is this is probably one of the more advanced recipes that I've ever done. Well, and thank I, you for saving it for me. Well, man, I, I thought it would make good content for you and I talked to you. Yes, sir. Okay. Well. I'm in good shape here. My meat flap is ready. Okay. I too have my Let me know when your meat flap is ready. This I got a little hole in my meat flap. You got some holes. I'm going to show you how to deal with this, okay? So, pulse. Pulse. Okay. You're close. So, the last step, I'd like to go right here. You're using my knife now. I know, Shelly. I don't know what you're struggling. This knife is not sharp enough. How dare you, sir? Sharpen your knives, son. How dare you? Make sure your knife is sharp when you cut this meat. So, a little sanitary thing here. A little plastic wrap. Yeah, plastic wrap on top. And all you're going to do, sir, I like to use the dotty side. And this is like a good, it's a good it's thing. It's called the tenderizer. It's, it's not a dotty thing. No, the dotty side. Cooking, cooking show. Is you use the tenderizer side. And take out, your, tenderize. take out your aggressions. Take them out. Beat it up, brother. Beat me. I'd love to. Thank you. I'm out of practice. Yeah, well. Oh, oh! Aggression. Whoa! He's really going for it. Get it good and tender. Good and tender. My good lover should. Paul's mask is now ready to go. Clarice! Excuse me! We're gonna leave it here. I've got some silt pads. This we can set aside. This is now. We're gonna use this from now on. Understood. We're gonna use the silt pad. We'll use that in a second. I'm gonna beat my meat. Beat your meat. And we'll be back in just a second. Um, okay, so next up. Salt and pepper, bud. Salt and pepper. We're just gonna hit yeah. every All the inch of it. Out. Every inch of it. Yep. Just hit really nice. this up. Salt and pepper at every point. You season. I like. Do you use kosher salt? We use the pink Himalayan. I, you know, I love I, it. I like it too. I, I've tried it. I feel like you get a on meat. I feel like you get a better flavor with kosher. Check your grind. Yeah, it might be the if grind. You do a, if you do a uh, coarser grind, it actually works out. Better. Also works well at dance clubs. We got them ready to go. I like to use these silk pads. Let's kind of leave them and let them sit. We're going to let these boys Haas get close to... Yeah, we haven't, Haas. Haas yet. we haven't talked about Haas. How about we talk about Haas while we go to the next step? So, we've heated over medium heat. Some oil right here. We have all of those mushrooms. Now, we're doing 24 ounces, but remember, we're doubling the recipe, so 12 ounces of mushrooms. Are they a specific no. kind of mushroom? Is it uh, you can use any. I prefer the portobello. Yes. These are baby bellas. Just slice them, 12 ounces. They typically will come in 12 ounce packages. 12 ounces or 24. We're just gonna saute those for a couple minutes on medium high heat. You can hear that sizzle. I love the smell of mushrooms too, bro. Do you go S&P on there or you just go? go we will. Out. We're about to do some S&P in just a second. I like to let it cook down just a little bit, and then we'll add some garlic and some salt. Uh -huh. So I'm doing four cloves, which is a, ta a teaspoon. Did I say tablespoon? You said tablespoon. I'm sorry. A teaspoon is equal to a thing of garlic. So normally for the 12 ounces of uh, mushrooms, I would do two teaspoons. But in this one, we're going to do four since we're doubling the recipe. I'm going to let these bad boys... You smell that? You smell smell that? can. I wish there was a smell can. It does smell delicious. It really does smell good. That's why I'm so excited to make this recipe with you. I just can't wait to get your reaction when you taste it. All right, so while our mushrooms are, uh, are uh, tightening up tightening up a little bit, we can talk a little bit about our bobblehead for the day, which is Mr. Eric Hosmer, everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite during the World Series run. I mean, a lot of people, don't get me wrong, a lot of people like the Salvi. Everybody likes Salvi, but Hosmer probably was our best player. Would you say that? Well, I don't know that I would say that, but I know that... Uh, Andrew Declan Wood. That was his go-to. This is Andrew's player. favorite player. In fact, Andrew has this exact bobblehead home. He does. So that's why they picked it, I think. But uh, Hosmer, this this is probably one of my favorite Royal moments right there. Taking the base. Runner at third, one out. Broken back. Cut off by right. Out. Throw home. Royal tie game. Unbelievable base running by Eric Hosmer. 
Eric Hosmer, I, I was sad he left, but I'm glad the Royals didn't pay him the contract. Yeah. That would have... Padres now, right? Yes, he plays for the Padres. Well, there's a couple... They're doing okay. They're doing fine. He's never lived up to the contract. Okay. Well, once you feel like uh, that your mushrooms are cooked down to your liking, um, that's why I add butter. It gives it a little bit smoother finish. Just a pat of butter. Um, I, I'm not going to double that part of this recipe, but a pat of butter should work fine with your 12 ounces as well. We're going to let that tighten up just a little bit, and then we're going to add, as soon as that butter melts, we're going to add ourselves some spinach. The mushrooms, it looks like the butter's melted down. Guys, spinach is one of these things where I don't care how much you add, it's going to bake down. It will be two cups. It, will, it, it always will be, it'll go away very quickly. This is a gigantic thing of spinach. Uh, this is 16 ounces of spinach. I'm going to use at least 8 ounces of it. So for your regular recipe, we're going to say 4 ounces of spinach. And you literally just throw it in there and let it wilt down. The size of that bad boy is lovely. Now, can you use frozen? Uh, you could use frozen. The issue you're going to have with frozen spinach, uh, I would really recommend for this recipe, you're going to see, you're going to see what we're doing this in, in a second. What will happen with frozen spinach is it's going to end up being watery, would be my guess. The you water, can condense it down. You can, I would keep it, keep it going. Keep it going. Boil, that boil it off. down. I would just be worried that your mushrooms might um, overcook. Understood. Now, the good thing about mushrooms is they can't take a lot of heat. Um, they can they can take it, man. You can cook mushrooms a while. All right, Smoke this is ready. Judah. Now, this is where your patience comes in, Paul. You're going to finish cooking that off. So we've got, let's recap. we got mushrooms. we got the garlic. Right? We add a little boutros, boutros garlic. Boutros, boutros garlic. A little butter. And then uh, we finish it off with spinach. And you cooked it all down. Four ingredients so far. Four ingredients so far. In our filling, you're going to cook that all the way down. See the smoke coming. Look at that smoke. Look at that smell. Dude, it's so fragrant in here. It's lovely. Um, we're going to just let this guy sit. Because here's what's going to happen. This is going to go inside our pinwheels. And if we don't let it cool down, we could start cooking the meat from the inside out. Or cook our hands. Which is not what you want to do. No. Either one of those things. Yeah. So don't cook your hands. Take our meat flaps now, let it cool down, I'm going to Take open up your meat flap, and I want you to flap. put the part that you did better on towards the top. Alright. Be so the better, the non-space map one there. Okay. When I saw this recipe on Binging with Babish, which I should probably give you guys a link to, the recipe put that it, I built this off of. Put it down. In yeah, the put it there, or I'll put it in a card up here or something. Um, he, he recommended that you cut this into a square. And then even later in the episode, he's like, yeah, why are you cutting this in the square? And I'll show you why in a second. Because basically what we're going to do, you are made cinnamon rolls. I have made cinnamon rolls. Okay, we are making a meat cinnamon roll. Delicious. It's, exactly. Delicious. Instead of cinnamon and sugar, we're going to use... Should we wait for our meat to rise? Smoked... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Smoked Gouda cheese. Okay, so smoked sugar, Gouda cheese. Smoked Gouda cheese and that spinach. That's, that, this, the smoked Gouda cheese and this is the... Butter and cinnamon sugar that Correct. goes in the center. Correct. Right? So we're gonna take we're gonna take these bad boys. Those bad boys. And we're gonna once spread it. Once it's cooled, we're gonna spread it like that. We're gonna put our cheese over the top, and then we're gonna work together. <clears throat> this is a two-person job. To, to roll. Same way, I yeah, we'll do it together. Yes, yeah, so and we'll sing. We'll sing the ghost theme song, um, and then we're gonna tie it up. We're gonna skewer it, and then we're gonna cut it into steaks. Mm, yes, I get where you're going with this. You want to lay down? I get it. Okay. We'll be back in a second, I guess. I don't know. A few minutes later. All right, guys. So we've let our uh, mushrooms and spinach cool down quite a bit. We're going to divide it evenly onto the meat flaps. Why do we keep saying meat flaps? I have flaps? stopped, and you continue to go for broke with the meat flaps. I do. It's still a little hot. I should have let this cool down. Yeah. If you can let this cool down longer than I did, you're going to want to get it out of the amazing juices that these have provided. You don't want those. Maybe we can like break that down and make it into like now, a pan sauce. May I? Or may I do so that I may learn? Yes, it's you, possible that I can. You may spread the. the you can love spread it here. There you go. All right. All right. Take it away. Hold on. Easy. Set it down. It's still hot. I'll give no you touch. Your... Okay. Take it. Take it. Go ahead. Take. Uh, oh, now I can. You got it. I just didn't want to hand it to you and like it was going to be awkward. <laughs> You've already made it all. Right, sir. You would keep saying meat flat. My oh. joy in life is to make things awkward. Understood. So smoke Gouda cheese. You normally find this in the deli uh, of your of your thing. I've got eight ounces here per flank steak. And just in case this does not make the cut, the man cut it himself. It was in a log of smoked Gouda. I did. I did. This is not your store brand. No, yeah, it's cut it yourself, people. Anytime you can like shred cheese yourself, 
I'm just going to start doing just this do as well. Dude, just do what I'm doing. Okay. This All is right. the easiest part of the recipe. Has it got to be the same orientation? Uh, it doesn't have to. You can do whatever you want. No, no, no. Just go across. You're going to see why in a second. Because this is going to serve... Speak remember how, how, good. how I told you, dude, Goodness. smoked good that is, is... That is on point. Freaking phenomenal. Okay, so we're going to work together. All right. I'm going to roll the first one. Yes. And then I'm going to have you roll the second. You'll be my assistant for the first one. I'll okay. be your assistant for the second. So we've taken some butcher's twine. If you don't have this in your kitchen, you need some. When I first did this recipe, there were no skewers involved, but this really helps you on the grill, which is where we're going to take these. So at the beginning of our recipes here, I've been soaking these in some water. Yes. So they won't burn. And at the beginning, I used full skewers. I'll show you what to do with that in just a second. We're going we're to save ourselves some skewers. When my wife and, and I got married, yes, we still have, it's been 15 years on Thursday, and we still have 5,000 skewers from our wedding. Bamboo skewers? Bamboo skewers. You're welcome. I think you registered for that. I'm <laughs> well, so, no, I'm thank you so much. We are so, <laughs> we bought you such a nice gift. That we, uh, now, I didn't quite, oh, no. right, see there, the hole. There, oh. Yeah, it's going to happen. Okay. It's going to happen, but remember. It's a tragedy. It's not a tragedy, it's fine. This is still a little warm. We should have let this cool a little bit longer, it's okay. We'll let mine cool. No, it's, it's, it's too late. Oh, it's, it's already should have let it go. Okay, right. so now I've gone as far as I can here. Yes, you're going to tuck it in. And I'm going to hold it over the top, actually. Right. Just like that. Okay, now, your hands take my place. My I need you to hold take your place. I need you to hold it tight. Got so it. Hold Got it tight. It. Now, taking your butcher's twine, you're going to come up the edge and go right to where the sides meet. Remember how he said, I was telling you about, ah, there we go, Babish. He said to cut off these sides first. I like to just tie it down. And we make this into kind of like a little extra steak. You get, you get a little tight? Yeah. You're a Boy Scout, right? We talked about the Eagle Scout we thing. We talked about it. We okay. talked about it. And then I just keep going. And I'm going to go about, I don't know, what do you think, what do you think that is? Maybe an inch and a half? It's about two an inches? inch and a half, somewhere up. Not two inches. I think two inches would be too yeah. much. Yeah, that's what I used to do. I'm trying a little bit smaller steaks today. Mm -hmm. And I'm just tying shoelaces here because it'll be easier later to get them off because we're going to cook them all the way through with these little guys on here. And then the people eating will have an easier time getting it off. First time I tried to do some fancy knots and stuff. And everybody's like, okay, get it off. And they end up cutting the string off. But now it's just, you pull the string, it comes right off. You're going from the same side because you go from the other side. I could. I've done it that way as well. But what I find, I've actually also started in the middle. Mm. And that can work. work and you work your out. way out. Yeah. I just thought with our orientation, with where we're standing. Now, what if you don't have a handy helper to... Uh... You can do this yourself. It just <laughs> takes... I didn't think you'd be up for it by yourself. No, no. Um, I'm asking for the people out there that maybe uh, want to make this. But I would say this is person. this is best made unless you're super like if you knew how to do the cool butcher's thing like where you I was going to suggest you know, saying well. the butcher's yes. knot that would totally work. I've done it. I once. don't know how to do that. I've done it once successfully in my life, and I'm sorry. I let you go. Is that right? You're fine. Right. You're fine. So if you knew how to do the what I call the butcher butcher's truss, yes, uh, that would work. But remember, these are going to be cut into individual steaks. So they're not going to live this way very long. Okay. Okay. So we've now trussed it together. It's amazing. It tastes so good. It smells so good. So, okay. Now, ready? Here's what we do. We go through, through. Run it through. And I'm going to do it on both sides of the of the string. Okay. But watch. I go on the right hand side of the string, going through. And I'm going to take a single skewer through each side, just like this. Trying to speed it up a little. I didn't have my string wasn't super straight there. Okay, you see what I'm doing? I'm on the right hand side of the string right now. I see it. This is going to give me stability that I need. I've poked it through. Now, this next step I didn't decide to start doing until I had done this recipe several times and realized you get on the grill and you have all these skewers like sticking out and you're like, what the heck? So you see, I used to evenly space them so they're on both sides. Now what I started doing, Put, snip the tip. Yeah, I want. I don't even need to cut them all the way off. I just stroke. Sometimes I can't. Sorry, Hobbs. Ow. Ow, sorry, Paul. Ow. Okay, but if you just get them scored, like I was just saying, you can just break them off. Yes. And then I take the skewers I just had. And notice the other side. Notice. I'm not using that one. No, it's fine. Notice I kept the pointy end, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this thing ever so slightly. Mm -hmm like this, mm -hmm. and then I can poke them through, through the top. and then I've got myself all four quadrants of this thing 
looking at the flap at the top, you know what I'm saying? It's giving me a lot of structural stability for something that wasn't really that structurally sound. Now I've got this bad boy, I get up, back out my cutting board, I take back the knife, and I go, watch this, I don't know if they'll see it there or not. This is where you cut the end off, and then where you've placed your in-betweens, yes, you're making steaks. And you cut through. It's very pretty. Very pretty. Look at that layer. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Right? And so that's, that's the steak. That's pretty. It's basically like you got yourself a little filet mignon with all the good stuff in it. Right. There. And Cindy asked, are you guys going to make any sides? I was like, why? There's no reason to. There's no reason to make no. sides. And the great thing is, look at where I put that string. Sometimes when you truss a piece of meat and you put it on there, now I've got the skewers on both sides holding the string in place. You've got a lot of stability for, right. for a device that's not yeah. that stable when it comes together. Let me finish cutting this guy down. We do have a few little extra bits that you end up with on this meal. Like so these end pieces. Tasty extra bits. Tasty extra bits. I like to just take those, sear them off in the same pan that I did the mushrooms in. And it's literally just like little cheesy so, goo. It's like cheesy goodness. Cheesy goodness. There's nothing to it. It's just like all the random leftovers. But here I am. I cut mine into about, you said about inch and a half. Inch, inch and a half. Inch and a half. No, this, yeah, that was a little bit small, but one, two, three, four, five, six steaks, just that's as a, I suspected. That's a family right there. You just fed your whole family. Oh my goodness. I just don't think you know. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. Isn't that great? That, that's a professional look. Isn't it good? Right well, wait till you see it cooked up, brother. All right, let's go. Let me just enjoy this the way okay. that it is. Okay. Take the compliments. Are you Take ready? Are you ready, Mr. Hart? I'm ready. I'm ready. This is a tight roll. Tight roll. Tight roll. Tight roll. And we're going to tie. Just like my jeans back in the yeah. early 90s. <laughs> yes, the tight roll <laughs> jeans. I kind of forgot about that. I'm, and, you, and you should. Oh, I left. Okay, so you're behind. It's okay. It's okay. Just keep rolling. I'm rolling. Just trust the process. <laughs> trust the roll. Trust the process. Trust the process. Pull towards you. Use the silk back to your advantage. Yeah. Thank you. Pull towards you. There you like go. That. Like yes, that. Like that. Yep. Okay, that cheese will be Just fine. Here. You're going to be fine. This is the part where you almost give up, but don't. Oh, don't so give up. This is so, so tricky. I made it look easy, didn't I? You did. I kind yeah. of. There's, 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 there's my. There's It's a fine. It's fine. Tongue. We can cut that off if you want, but I think you're fine. I think it'll cook down. Oh, yeah. I'm going to roll back towards me. Okay. Do you want me to tie or do you want to switch me spots? You, I'm going to hold. Okay, I'll tie. You, you tie. Now that we know what's going on. Do you want me to go to the middle of the tie? See, this is why I didn't want you to go to the middle, because I just don't think it's possible for well, you to keep it tight. I tie here. And this is good, though. Keep like, seriously, right? Yeah. It's an intensive meal, but this is like... Leave this, no shroom behind. This is like the fancy, like... This, is a, this is a steakhouse meal. Right. Yeah. This is not your run. This is a Friday night, sitting down with with the lady, maybe or little, whomever you choose. Maybe a little butter at Cabernet Sauvignon. Look at that! It's delicious. Look, Look at, at Paul's thing. Look he did my, it. Look at my thing. Look at your thing. Let's let's even those out. That's on me, not you. No, no. Okay. Now, skewers. Skewers. Now, okay. Let me just make sure I do this correctly. Okay. We're gonna go in to the to the right side. To the right side. As long as it's consistent, you could go left if you wanted. And then push, push it, all the push way, all the way through. through. Yep, like that. that. Mm -hmm. All right. So still Keep this going side. Right. Yes, sir. This so side. he's going on the right hand side of that string that he just put on. More. Yeah, go a little further. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Use the sticky Point, side. Pointy yep. end. Pointy end. Pointy end. end. And through the meat of the hand. Try not to cut your fingers off. Excellent. And I've, again, I've tried this many different ways. This is the best way to skewer it. At me if you don't agree, but this is the best way to skewer this bad boy. At him as many times as you want. I at people. I should. Is, it, is that, is that a, uh, a YouTube -y thing that you can do? I don't to know. To at people on the YouTube? I just say it a lot. I don't even know why. I also say the YouTubes a lot. I'm, I'm I do. Old. That's me. I say that. I think you picked that up from the show. I may have. Also, uh, the, the drink it. And sync it. I believe I've seen that's a other red, place. That's a written link. It is, and I can yeah, notice that you uh, every single time. Okay, all right. There you go. We have to rotate. Give it a little pivot. Rotate. 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 Give it a pivot. And I go. I kind of go at an angle. Uh, I go like bam. So you're gonna go to the other side to this side. Yeah, but you want to be like here, right? So we're gonna go to the other side of the string to the other side of the string. Correct. Right. Making like a little X. You Use your pointer scythe. Pointy side. Pointy side. 
Let's double check on the other side. Through there. Bam! Look at you! Last step. Go back to the home. Last step. Big stakes. I need my knife. Use mine. No. It's so much better. Just feel what a real knife feels like. Okay, Come so on. Cut, cut the end off first. The knife shaming. A little extra knife shaming. This little, little, there. Here. Yes, sir. Right here. Mm, maybe a little towards you. There. Here. You just try to make it so, think of it like it's a stake. Like you, how big are you going to want it? So you're well, cutting. That's, that's over here. Right, but yeah. it's going to fall out though. So you're going to cut this in half. Yes. So I try to think, okay, half of that goes about there. All right. Okay. Just don't cut your fingies. See how that knife actually my cuts? My See how that glides through the meat? That's what a knife is supposed to do. Okay. This is the last time I bring a knife to your house. Cut on that side now. Get the, get the ends going first. Or maybe first. it's the first time. It'll be the first. There'll be many times where your knife will come to my meat drops. I, this is how much I trust this man. He says, bring your knife. Your yeah, favorite man. knife. It's going to be it's gonna be fun. Bring your knife. We're going to film a show yeah. with right. knives. Now halfway. <laughs> and then I brought my children. You did. Kids are going to love this. Kids are going to love it. Yeah, we made that first one pretty thick. That's a thick boy. Yeah, that's it. That's a big boy. Ooh, Paul! What? What? That is a heart sized steak right there. Oh my god. Just look at that. I feel like that's a little bit off, off kilter there, though. What do you mean? It's this knife that's throwing me off. Yeah, I doubt it. It's fine. You're going to be good. These are pretty forgiving once you cook them. The trickiest thing about these is just making sure that they get cooked through. Yes. Because the way the meat is in there, right? I got a little bit. Twine. Yeah, you gotta watch out for that twine. twine. Okay, looks like we got it, man. So we double up our recipe. Oh, dude, okay, that was gonna be a little weird at the end there, but it's alright. It's mine. Right? It's okay. <laughs> hey, you did great! Thank you, buddy. Brother. Okay, let's wash our hands and then we get things going to the grill. Oh, wait, we're going to the grill. Now, going to the grill. knowing that you were coming over today, you, yes. you asked a second ago, how is this gonna work on the grill? I did. These actually will work perfectly on a grill that you just bought. What kind of grill did you get? I, I get a flat top. Flat top grill? Yeah. I don't have a flat top grill. Well, you should get one. They I have a flat top grill. Shout out, members Mark. Or do I? Let's yeah, you got the grill. Let's go. All right, Paul, how disappointed are you? I'm extremely disappointed. So extremely. I told him I got a Blackstone. I no, didn't, but. You said flat top grill. I you did. Never said I did say a flat top grill. Here's what I got. I don't even have one. Guys, this is just, you were talking about cast iron. It's all working out perfectly. It's beautiful. Cast iron skillet right here expanded into a grill pan. It's got the grated side as well, which you can use inside. Don't get me wrong. You but fancy uh, grill fancy marks. Lines. Yeah, fancy lines. Who cares? This is going to go down right on my cooktop. We're going to put it towards the back and I'm going to let that heat up and that's going to be where we cook our steaks, bro. All right. So we've preheated our grill. We're our, our, our discount Blackstone. Paul doesn't have a name brand one either, but this is even better. It's great. It's like a regular grill. It works. We got to heat it up like crazy. We want to sear off these edges to keep the cheese in and lock it all in, right? So you're going to sear it super high heat. Once you feel like it's loosened up enough for you to move, you're going to flip it back over. Your pan might get a little dirty. And then as soon as you've got it like seared off, and you feel like you, you don't want to cook it too fast on the outside, I'm going to move them up to the top rack and use the radiant heat of the grill to finish the rest of this little project we got going here. Oh, yes. that's the sound you want, son. I've got these boys, they are sizzling away just like crazy. You're going to let them sit there for a while, just trust my judgment, and then we're going to flip them over, use your instant read, meat thermometer right here. This is the only way to tell if these steaks are done, guys. You can't do the touch test, you can't Use the hand test if you've ever you ever used that one. I've used it, yeah. Yeah, and you this, can't use that. On where, where you're at is the uh, correct yeah. the doneness. I use it all the time, but that will not work on these steaks, y'all. There's too much going on inside. You want to get an internal temperature for that inside of the steak. That'll let you know because the outside's going to cook so much faster because you're you're grilling it like crazy. All right, guys. So we've been cooking a while. These boys have been on a journey here. Actually, started on this black stone. Wasn't happy with the sear I was getting. So I put those down on the grill grates. I tell you what, you get some drips, but it smells good. It smells great. <laughs> it smells really good. Yeah. And then uh, you, you, uh, we, we put them up on the top, and I've got them finishing off right here. Uh, when I normally do these, I wanted to surprise Paul with that Blackstone thing. And I do think on a Blackstone, these will cook up really, really oh, well. Absolutely. Um, but what I, when I do these normally, I sear them off in my cast iron skillet, and then I stick them into the oven on a pan and let them finish off there. Uh, when you take the temperature for these guys, again, you want your instant read. If you go to the outside of the, this steak, you're going to get a really high temperature. That's not where you want to go. You want to go find the fleshy meat middle, and if you can get those, you want to get that right to 130. 130. See, this one right here is not quite ready yet. It's only at 122. 
So we want to make sure it gets up to 130. You let them rest and it brings it up five more degrees. Always cook, always cook any steak to 130 on the grill, in my opinion. But uh, anyway, these are looking good. I'm gonna check, keep checking them until they get to that internal temperature at 130. We're gonna take it inside and we're gonna taste these bad boys. I hope you're ready to eat, man. I'm getting I'm hungry. ready to eat, let's do this. All right, so we're back. Oh, Paul. This looks delicious. It so, smells so good. It smells so good. Okay, so remember, um, we, we tied a string, right? So we did. Step one, take off your string. But remember, we tied it like a shoelace, so it'll come right off. But. Should we remove the skewers first? Either way. Okay. I don't want to tell you how to untie your shoe. I don't want to do something that is going to go against. No, me. it's fine. I just want you to see how well this stays together. Like right. I'm so proud of the structural integrity of this little steak that we've made. And I am proud of you. Thanks, man. Like a shoelace. Like a shoelace. Yay! Just like that. See? Nice. Um, I, I see mushrooms. Blind squirrels. I see... I see spinach. I see. You got the whole tuna. package in here. There is really no, no reason to have anything else other than this. Yeah. Okay. okay so we finished this up in the black. So we ended with like some of the cheese, like some through, and you got some of the like crusty cheesy bits yeah. at the bottom. Oh, yeah. that, is, that is. I delicious. think that that's even better. That's like the right. best thing on your plate right now. I've got a little bit. I don't have quite <laughs> as much. Oh. See that? Oh boy. Okay. You ready? All right, man. Get yourself a bite. I don't know. Get a bite. I don't know if we have to dink it and sink it. Oh my gosh! I got a nice. This is a nice cook on mine. It's, this is gorgeous. Nice. It's gonna get. It's gonna a little bit more little bit. rare in the middle. As you go, make sure you get all the little bits. And that's a perfect bite. All right, right brother. There. Dink it. Dink it. Sink, Sink it. it. Let's go. Mmm. You shouldn't keep any of these. Isn't that terrible? I'll take them off your hands. Holy cow! These are really good. Oh. This is really good. I don't even know. Why is it so good? Everything complements everything else. And it's good and balanced all the way through. It's not overly heavy. There's not nope. too much of the smoked gouda. There's not too much of the mushroom. It's like, <clears throat> dude, dude. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, no sauce. Don't don't put any. Nope. Not necessary. It's good stuff. Dude, I'm so glad you came by. Thanks for having me, man. Of course, it was good stuff. The boys will be back soon from swimming. We're gonna get them some food as well. Um, this has been another chew with Rue. Thanks, Paul. Any, you know, shout Thank anybody you, out? You got anything you want to say? Anywhere we can catch you? What's up? I'm always around. That's all I can say. All right. I have no idea. Until next time, y'all. Bye. Oh my goodness. This is great. So good. What? Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Oliver. Yeah. Ah. Mason. And Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go into the wild blue yonder. Honey high to the meat flaps. Meat flaps. Alright, so this is just, this has been meeting up meat with Paul Mark. Meat flaps. Meat flaps. Is that it? Together, what do you get? And, uh, deliciousness. Deliciousness.